to Your Health, where we explore the latest in health across the country. I'm Erica Cardenas. Today we're talking about swim safety and how it's so important now that many of us are isolating at home. But first, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. We'll talk to the Hubbard Family Swim School about how to keep your kids safe around the pool. A dentist office your kids will enjoy going to and living a more active lifestyle without glasses. All that and more in this episode of Your Health. Summer and swim safety go hand in hand, but this year it's different because kids are home all day and many of us are isolating during the pandemic. Joining me now is Bob Hubbard, founder of the Hubbard Family Swim School. Thanks for being with us, Bob. Happy to be here. Thank you. First off, the American Academy of Pediatrics is concerned about an increase in drownings uh, during the pandemic. Why is this? Well, just as you stated in your intro, a lot of families are at home. And I think one of the things that we get worried about and the physicians do too, is inattention. So you're in the home, the kids are wandering, they're climbing all over the place. When my kids were teenagers, they'd be on the roof, you know, if we didn't pay attention to it. So making sure that you know where the kids are, uh, and especially if you have a pool, that's where the risk comes in. So what should parents be doing right now, Bob, to keep kids safe around water while while everyone is home? So I think the number one thing, and even though we make our living teaching swim lessons, the number one thing is to secure your pool. If you have a pool, you have to make sure you have it secure with a fence that locks and it's high enough and it's and it's a good, solid fence. Um, You know, we know kids are climbers they get over it they get around it 95 plus percent of drownings occur due to breach barriers so a a gate gets left open somebody goes to get something and leaves a rock in front of the gate so that they're oh i'm coming back and i don't want to have to relock it so make sure you have uh, that secured that's number one the probably the other thing that i would say is if you're using the pool pick a water watcher Pick somebody for 10 minutes at a time or 15 minutes at a time to be the person. Because we have a saying that says, when everybody's watching, nobody's watching. So you gotta be alert and you gotta be aware. So should parents still get their kids swim lessons during the pandemic? Absolutely, I think uh, we're kind of busy right now. We're not as busy as we were, but one, uh, the CDC says chlorine kills the COVID bug. So being in the water is a really safe place to be. Uh, Social distancing in the lobby or on the pool deck is important, but making sure that the kids maintain and grow their skills. So Bob, tell us about the classes that you're offering there at Hubbard Family Swim School. So we offer everything from six month olds all the way up through to 10 or 12 year olds, but we've got uh, under age two, they're in the water with mom or dad or grandma or a caregiver, which I think is very important because one of our goals is to teach parents how to teach their kids. You know, we see some of these other methodologies that are out there. And one of the things we believe is uh, the parent is the best teacher of their child because we could do things in the pool at our swim school with the kids and then they go home and mom or dad or doesn't know what to do. And I think that's one of the things we would encourage people to do is when you're at home, encourage the kids to work on their swimming skills. Have them swim the length of the pool or the width of the pool or streamline or do different things that they're learning in swim classes or you see so that they're not just dog paddling and staying in one place. Now, tell us a little about the changes that you've made there at the school to keep everyone safe during this time. So we're cleaning like crazy. uh, We've reduced our capacity in the lobby and in the pool. We reduced our classes, our normal classes, from one teacher to four children to one to three. We reduced our baby classes from a ratio of one to six to one to four. So we're creating more space. We're cleaning in between every shift. We're asking parents to wait outside till 10 minutes before their class comes in. And then we've got a flow. If you walk around our lobbies, we've got arrows all over the place to maintain flow one direction in, one direction out. So we've gotten really good feedback on what's going on and our parents seem happy. And from my point of view, as long as they're comfortable and safe and they're all wearing masks, whether they are happy with it or not, but they are cooperating. Absolutely. Such great advice. Thank you so much for being with us, Bob. We appreciate your time. 
Well, thank you for being interested in this issue. It's a very, very important. Drowning is the number two killer of children under the age of six, other than car accidents. So we got to keep our guard up and we got, the water is great. It's a beautiful place to be, but we have to respect it. If you'd like more information on Hubbard Family Swim School, just head over to their website. Good dental hygiene is important to your overall well-being and one dentist in California is creating a fun and safe environment for kids during this time. We brush our teeth, we floss our teeth, and love to go to the super dentist. The reason that people typically don't like their dentist is because uh, they're associated with something painful, right? It's a needle or a drill or something. So the super dentist is the only dental practice on the planet where kids literally beg to go to the dentist. We have orthodontics, we see adults, but really the core practice that we have is to serve kids. We want to make sure that the kids have fun, so we create magical experiences through the way our offices are themed and designed. Our superheroes, villains, we have our own movies, we have our own custom music, our own products. So when they come to the office, they feel really comfortable. So let the super dentist take care of it. Some of the things parents can do at home to make sure that kids can maintain their oral health between visits is uh, to build positive association to their oral care at home as well. That starts with how they brush their teeth. Those daily routines are so critical to maintain at home, especially during this pandemic. Because like everything else, kids being home, not going to school, their daily routines have been appended, right? And so we encourage parents to make sure that these important routines are kept and make sure the kids still value their oral hygiene and their brushing and flossing. <laughs> Dentists and dental offices in general were experts when it comes to infection control. Even before COVID, you know, we've had to deal with other viruses and other bacteria. And because of COVID, many dental offices across the country, we've added so much more technology and systems and processes to make sure this virus is also safe. So we feel really good about inviting everybody back to our offices. Our new safety protocols really start with uh, when you call our office. You know, we make sure that we do a thorough screening on the phone to make sure that we only allow healthy people inside the office. We've virtualized our lobbies and waiting rooms. Uh, so now that's in the car or outside the office. So you can check in virtually now through our website. You can do all the paperwork digitally on your phone or tablet. And then we have a really, really cool virtual super lounge that on our website that kids can be entertained through our movies and our music and fun stuff and parents can be educated about everything COVID and non-COVID with a lot of recent articles and interviews that we've done across the country. American Dental Association did a survey and uh, the majority of people, 75 to 80 percent of people feel very comfortable going back to their dentist right now. But there's still 15 percent of people or so that they're uncomfortable. Your dental care and oral care is super important during a health pandemic because it's about overall health. With those uh, patients that are a little bit concerned about going back to a dentist, my message is dental offices are super safe and this is something that you cannot wait until there's a vaccine. I really encourage everybody to go back to their dentist and take care of their oral health. If you're thinking about heading to the lake this summer to go boating, remember to wear a life jacket as most boating fatalities occur from drowning. Here's what's coming up next on the show. We head to Carrot Eye Center to see the latest Envision restoration and a heart procedure helping patients cut their hospital stays. sometimes be hard while wearing glasses. The doctors at Carrot Eye Center show us a procedure to free you of your spectacles. Hi, my name is Matthew Hammond. I'm a surgeon and owner here at Carrot Eye Center. Today is a great day because we get to do surgery on not only my best friend and partner, but uh, my other surgeon here at, at Carrot Eye Center, Dr. Michael Harrion. So we're gonna fix his vision. Hi, I'm Mike Harrion. I'm an owner and a surgeon here at Carrot Eye Center. It's another exciting surgical day here, although it's a little bit unique today uh, because I'm the patient and looking forward to going through the process here and want to share that with you. With this procedure that we're doing today on Dr. Harrion, 
this procedure is actually awesome for a number of different people. So for example, it's great for that, you know, late 40s, mid 50 range people, maybe even up to your mid 60s. As we gain wisdom, the lens inside of our eye gets a little thicker with time and it, it doesn't have the capacity to zoom in and zoom out anymore, it's sort of thicken and thin. So we call it presbyopia and you lose the ability to see up close. It's like clockwork that we can almost tell how old you are based on how much you still have or how much you've lost. Yesterday, I wasn't nervous at all. Uh, when I got up this morning, I was a little bit nervous. Uh, and I, I think if I go to the root of it, it's just an unknown. But that is completely normal. Even for me who understands a procedure, probably a lot better than somebody going through it, I still have anxiety. Um, just because it's surgery, it's your eyes. But what comforts me is who's doing my surgery and where I'm getting my surgery done. So I think it's time to get Dr. Herring's vision fixed. I can't wait, let's get going. Things centered up beautifully. Gonna feel a little pressure here for a half second. Your vision's gonna go dark for just a minute. Completely normal. Doing beautiful. Here we go. Just relax, it's going great. And that's it, you're all done, brother. I can't thank you guys enough. That was just really, really smooth from beginning to end. So it's been a little bit under 24 hours. I've had LASIK surgery to both eyes. Um, coming back today, my pre-op or my post-op vision check was 2015 in the right eye. 2025 in the left eye, which is exactly what we expected for the blended vision. Uh, I really am having no discomfort whatsoever. At Carrot Eye Center, we have a lot of tools at our disposal. And depending on what the patient's needs are, what they want to accomplish for their activities of daily life, we want to be able to custom tailor a refractive procedure. In my case, it was a blended vision so that I don't need to use glasses to see distance or near. I'm post-op day one, not even 24 hours, and I'm thrilled. Joining us now to talk about an exciting heart procedure at Honor Health is Dr. Padalia. Welcome, doctor. Thanks so much for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here. First off, what is the TAVR procedure? So TAVR stands for transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And what it is, is it's a means of replacing someone's aortic valve in a non-surgical fashion. So we can do it in the same similar way uh, as an angioplasty is done, so through an artery in the groin. What are the benefits of delivering the valve through a catheter? Well, what it does is it takes away completely the risks associated with the open heart surgery procedure. So over the last decade, we've learned that in high risk patients, medium risk patients, and low risk patients, that doing it this way through a catheter in the groin, you achieve the same benefits that you do with an open procedure. So tell us who would be a good candidate for this type of procedure? So pretty much anybody who's over the age of 65 that has a tri-leaflet, so a normal three-leaflet aortic valve that is stenosed, so it doesn't open well. So most of those patients tend to be great candidates for the TAPR procedure. Okay, so, so doctor, you recently discharged the first same-day heart procedure patient here in Arizona. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so we're absolutely pr proud at Honor Health to be able to achieve that. Um, basically, what we did in layman's terms is to do a full valve replacement equivalent to what can be done with an open heart procedure and then send that same patient home after a successful procedure in less than uh, 12 hours. So the way we were able to do that is the exquisite planning that we do at Honor Health when we work up these patients. With the TAVR procedure, we have tests that we do and we understand what obstacles may be present so we can try to avoid them. And when it's done in that matter, you get a perfect result, no complications. Usually, if everything goes great, they're sent home either the next day or the day after. So to be able to do this, and it's a first uh, for our system, we believe it's the first in Arizona, 
um, is something that we're absolutely proud of. So tell us why is a procedure like this with less hospital time so important, especially right now during the pandemic? There are two reasons. Um, the one is uh, there's a lack of beds. So if you're able to do it this way, uh, we have beds then available for sicker patients that need it that may have um, COVID-19, uh, for example. Um, the other reason why is we want to also try to avoid patients to have in-hospital complications. So they may come in doing okay, uh, but as, as you know, you can get hospital-related illnesses um, and infections when you stay in the hospital for a longer period of time. So it helps with that um, in addition to the economic benefits of sending a patient home the same day. Doctor, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you being with us. For more information on Honor Health, just head over to their website. One of the best things you can do when it comes to water safety is to learn CPR. Check with your local community centers or the American Heart Association for in-person or virtual classes. Here's what's coming up next on the show. A center that has a unique approach to help people struggling with addiction. And why intermittent fasting may be a good choice for you. intermittent fasting, so we wanted to talk to an expert on how to do it effectively. Intermittent fasting is another fad that I see quite a bit in my office, which basically is where you eat for a certain period of time during the day, typically eight hours, and then there's 16 hours where you're fasting. And this is a great way to help reestablish your metabolism, um, help to balance your blood sugar levels, and just allow your digestive tract to rest in between eating. A lot of us, unfortunately, we're busy, we graze throughout the day, we don't actually sit and eat solid meals, and so our blood sugar is kind of constantly up and never actually drops and rises, and our guts are constantly working. So in that way, intermittent fasting can be really helpful. There are some things I see with it, though, that I think could be improved. So most people that intermittent fast will start eating later in the day. So they're not eating until one o'clock, two o'clock, and really our bodies receive food best in the beginning of the day. This is the time when we wake up, our cortisol levels are high, it means it's time to get out of bed, it's time to feed us, our blood sugar has dropped. We receive food well in the morning, and then we typically do better if we don't eat quite as late at night before bed. So I always suggest my patients, if they're going to do it, to try to shift their intermittent fasting so that they're eating a little bit earlier in the day and stopping a little bit earlier at night, which can be a little harder sometimes for people's social calendars, um, but it does work better with our health to do it that way. Getting on a path to recovery was a struggle for Izzy, but with the help of Decision Point Center, she's now on her way to success. Where I grew up was like, if you can keep doing the stuff you need to do and you can still manage to get messed up, then like, it's fine. That lifestyle stayed with me. It was, if I had a good day, I wanted to get drunk. If I had a bad day, I wanted to get drunk. I lived with my good friends at the time and I guess they got to see me behind closed doors. I kind of tried to play it off like, I'm fine, everything's fine. Like I didn't want my problems to be like a burden on them or kind of seem like I was like throwing a pity party for myself. They got to see me become like an isolation drinker and disappear kind of inside. Like people talk about how when they go to treatment, they're like in a shell of themselves and like that's what it was. They've been talking with Decision Point and they gave me an intervention and they said, we can't help you and like we know you can't help yourself, but like we're taking you to some place that can and it did. Decision Point has done so much for me. I don't even know where to begin. Their group therapy is awesome. Like I had never been in that type of a setting before. They wanted me to talk about my problems and like I've never really had that. My feelings and hardships, they were important and they made me okay with myself in ways that I had never been even before I started using drugs. I've had friends that were girls my entire life, but it's never reached the level of depth that it did when I was there. 
A&R was awesome, activities and recreation. They do a really good camping trip. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> we also did, you know, recovery-oriented exercises, like we had time to like kind of meditate in the forest alone. It was just nice to be out of a treatment setting and like being able to enjoy myself and knowing like, oh, this is actually going to be possible. They set me up for living a life outside of treatment. I still live in Prescott. I go to meetings in my home group. I work at a restaurant here, and I also house manage. I fellowship, and I just surround myself with sober people. It's crazy that like I can wake up and know that I'm capable of living a day, going to work, getting errands done, doing things that I never used to be able to do without either being on something to give me the energy to get through it, or drinking something afterwards to reward me. That's something that I, I never thought that I would have for myself. Thanks to Decision Point, I've been sober for 16 months. Don't go away, we have more coming up on your health. We'll tell you why a mop bucket can pose a danger to your kids. We want to thank Bob Hubbard again for his swim safety advice. Before we go, here are a few more water safety tips you may not have thought of. After you give your kiddos their bath, be sure to drain the water. It may be tempting to get them ready first, but leaving water in an unintended bathtub can pose a danger. Also, be sure to empty buckets after mopping floors or cleaning the car. Toddlers tend to be top heavy and can fall into a bucket easily and not be able to get back out. Even an inch of water can be deadly. Finally, keep your toilet lids closed. Any kind of water can make a kid curious and lead to danger. Thank you for joining us on your health. Please stay healthy and well. I'm Erica Cardenas. See you next time.